Welcome to another episode of Eric Wade Whiskey Studies and in this video I'm going to do uh, an overview of the history of Bushmills Distillery and their core range. So part of my ongoing uh, study of Irish whiskey, I'll be doing a review of uh, a Bushmills blend and a Bushmills single malt. But before I do so, I want to give some background information which really helps uh, put a whiskey in its proper context. You really don't, I think, appreciate a whiskey until you know a little bit about the people behind it, it its history, uh, its um, philosophy, and everything else that goes into uh, creating that whiskey. Also, you want to understand what is sort of the core range, what is the very heart of the production of the distillery. While they may have special bottles you can get uh, from the distillery and these rarities that might show up in an airport here and there, it's really the core range that really helps you understand uh, the production method and uh, philosophy of producing whiskey. So let's get into the history. The old Bush Mills Distillery is located in Bush Mills County Interim in Northern Ireland. The area has a long tradition with distillation. According to one story, as far back as 1276, an early settler called Sir Robert Savage of Ards reported defeating the Irish in battle fortified his troops with a mighty drop of aqua vitae. In 1608, a royal license was granted to Sir Thomas Phillips by King James I to distill whiskey in the area. Later in 1784, the Bushmills Old Distillery Company was established by Hugh Anderson. Bushmills suffered many lean years with numerous periods of closure, with no record of distillery being in operation in the official records both in 1802 and 1822. In 1860, a Belfast spirit merchant named James McColgan and Patrick Corrigan bought the distillery. Later in 1880, James McColgan and Patrick Corrigan formed a limited company. In 1885, the original Bushmills buildings were destroyed by a fire, but the distillery was quick to rebuild. In 1890, a steamship owned and operated by the distillery, SS Bushmills, made its maiden voyage across the Atlantic to deliver Bushmills whiskey to America. It called at Philadelphia and New York City before heading on to Singapore, Hong Kong, Shanghai, and Yokohama. From 1920 to 1933, although American Prohibition came as a large blow to the Irish whiskey industry, William Boyd, Bushmills director at the time, predicted the end of the Prohibition and had a large storage of whiskey ready to export. Following the Second World War after 1945, the distiller was then bought by Isaac Wilson. In 1972, Bushmills distillery was taken over by Irish distillers controlling the production of all Irish whiskey at the time. In June 1988, Irish Distillers was bought by French liquor group Pernod Ricard. In June 2005, the distillery was bought by Diageo for a whopping two million pounds. Diageo also announced a large advertising campaign in order to regain a market share for Bushmills. In November of 2014, it was announced that Diageo had traded the Bushmills brand with Jose Cuervo in exchange for the 50% of the Don Julio brand of tequila that Diageo did not already own. Alrighty, so now that we know a little bit of the history of um, Bushmills Distillery, let's talk a little bit about the core range of whiskeys. They produce six different bottles. They produce blended Irish whiskeys and single malt. In fact, Bushmills claims to be the original single malt. Of the blended whiskeys, first we have the Bushmills original, triple distilled, grain whiskey aged five years in American oak, then blended with Irish single malt. It's bottled at 40% alcohol by volume and sells for $16 here in the United States. Then we have the Bushmills Red Bush. It too is triple distilled. It is a blend of Irish grain whiskey and Irish single malt some claiming insider source information that it's a 70-30 blend. It is aged in first filled bourbon barrels, bottled at 40% alcohol by volume, and sells for $17 here in the United States. The third is the Bushmills Black Bush. 
It is triple distilled, a blend of 80% Irish single malt and 28% Irish grain whiskey, aged up to seven years in Oloroso sherry cask and ex bourbon cask. It too is bottled at 40% alcohol by volume and sells for $30 here in the United States. So I'm going to be reviewing in another video, the Bushmills Black Bush. I didn't want to put all this information into that video because I thought it would make it a little bit too long. So I thought I'd give a, a nice summary of the history and the core range whiskeys in one video, then do my review of the whiskeys in another video. So you're going to want to keep your eye open for those videos. Of the Irish single malts, Bushmills has a 10 year old single malt whiskey. It is made from 100% malted barley. It's aged a minimum of 10 years in ex sherry cask and seasoned bourbon cask. It is bottled at 40% alcohol by volume and sells for around $37. Then we have the Bushmills 16 year old single malt Irish whiskey. It too is made from 100% malted barley, aged a minimum of 15 years in older roaster sherry cask and ex bourbon cask, then finished in large port cast for nine months. It's bottled at 40% alcohol by volume and sells for about $90 here in the United States. Then the final bottle in the Bushmills core range is the Bushmills 21 year old single malt Irish whiskey. It's made from 100% malted barley, it's triple distilled, aged for 19 years in Old Roaster Sherry cast and ex bourbon cast. Then it is matured in Madeira cast for two years. It's bottled at 40% alcohol by volume and sells for around $200 here in the United States. All right, and I will also be doing a review of the Bushmills 21 year old uh, single malt Irish whiskey. Really, really looking forward to uh, getting into that one. All right, so I hope you have enjoyed this video and I wanna say keep your eyes out for these other videos and who knows, I may end up doing eventually the entire core range. All right, if you have not subscribed to my channel and yet you like watching my videos, I would ask that you do so. Ring the bell to be notified when I go live. And if you are one of my Patreon subscribers, I wanna thank you very much for becoming a part of my little group. And if you're considering supporting this network, there is a link down below in the description so you can learn how you too can become a Patreon. All right, until next time, Slangy Vought.